Finally, let's have a brief conversation about developing our own scales. First of all, developing a scale is something that should not be done arbitrarily. There should be a process that systematically guides you through it. There are multiple different proposed scale development procedures out there. I would argue that the best procedure of all is to take advantage of others' hard work. Academics, in particular, are well trained in the process of developing scales. It can take many different projects and a lot of fancy statistical analysis to render a scale that's appropriate for high-level research. I would encourage you to leverage scales that are, off, that are already created by marketing academics and high-level marketing researchers. Go to Google Scholar and search through marketing and management journals looking for a scale that measures the, to the concepts you're interested in. In addition, marketing borrows heavily from psychology and sociology. Look at those journals for measures that may be of interest to you. Let's illustrate the use of using Google Scholar to find validated marketing scales by way of a simple example. Let's imagine that you, as a marketer, have been reading up on a concept called brand love. Perhaps you've realized that going beyond customer satisfaction and actually developing a deep, profound, emotional connection with your brand and your customers is essential to succeed in the marketplace. After researching and reading a little bit about this topic, it occurs to you that it's going to be very important for your company to actually track the level of brand love experienced by your customers over time. In other words, if you're trying to nurture brand love, you have to track it to confirm whether or not you're succeeding and growing it. Well, that means you're going to need a validated scale to continuously measure brand love across time. Rather than just making up your own scale, let's turn to academic research and see if we can find something. So I simply navigate to Google Scholar, and once you know the name of the concept, just type it in. Brand love is the concept, and scale is usually the word that we use, sometimes the word measurement, and see what we find. And sometimes when you're new at reading the titles of academic articles, it can be a little tricky. But here we have one at the very top, brand love development and validation of a practical scale. That seems to be a very good start. We see that it's published in 2017, relatively current, although many well-validated scales were published much earlier. We also see that it's already been cited by 101 individuals, a imperfect but still good indicator that it's that this article has been re reasonably influential. We also see there's some other articles down here that suggest that brand love, uh, a scale might be present inside the article. I see the word understanding and measuring romantic brand love, for example. But let's start with this first one. Luckily for us, we don't even have to navigate to the library system and pull up the actual article, although the site is easy to find right here, so it wouldn't be difficult for us to dig up. There's actually a PDF readily available for us. Once we find our article, it's always important to read the abstract quickly to see if it's going to provide to us what we're really looking for. And here it says, the current research develops a more parsimonious brand love scale. Parsimonious means short, that's good. With three nested versions of 26, 13, and six items respectively. That's also very appealing for us for practical marketing research where we probably don't want to have a really long scale so these six and 13 item versions look like they'll work. And now we would want to read through the entire article and understand what was done. Initially, we should probably scroll through quickly and see if we can find where the actual measures are. Quickly, we find a table, often at the beginning or near the very end of the article. You know, say items for the brand love scale. Great. And we see here in the far right column the actual question items specific to, they're using American Eagle Outfitters, but we would just swap the words, of course, of the brand. We also see that, that the idea of brand love really isn't one just single concept, but it's a, a variety of different concepts. That's why we see the word factor here. So each one of these bullet points represents one of the 26 items. We don't actually want to use the 26 item version that's a little lengthy, even if it's a little more accurate. Um, we would want to find the shorter version. And I realized there was a useful footnote at the bottom of the table where the footnote A says item was reduced for the 13 item scale and item B, and footnote B was item reduced for the six item scale. So now I realize there are questions like this, uh, questionnaire items listed with A and B. So I would simply say if I wanna use the six item scale, I would select all of the ones that had the uh, footnote B here and those would comprise my six items. And that's all it takes to dig up a useful scale that we can use for our own internal research. Now, admittedly, learning how to chew through and understand academic scale validation articles isn't the easiest thing. It takes a bit of practice. And if you're doing this on your own for the first time, it might take a lot longer than quickly scrolling through an article and assessing its validity. And often you have to look through multiple articles to assess which scale or scales are most appropriate for your purpose. Still, this outlines the basic process 
And it's definitely still quicker and saves a lot more money than trying to come up with a validated scale on your own. People are in such heavy need of marketing scales that we also have numerous handbooks out there that readily list hundreds upon hundreds of different scales that you could use for your own research purposes. Here are just a few of the scale handbooks that you might find useful to yourself. I own a few of these and the library at SDSU also has several of these books on reserve. If you find yourself in a situation where you do have to develop your own scale, there are a number of procedures out there that you can use to follow to become better at developing a useful scale. Many of them are based off of Churchill's method that was published in 1979. Here's the eight-step process that Churchill recommends when developing your own scale. I'm not going to go into the details of how to do this other than just give you a high-level overview. These first three steps, specifying the domain of the construct, is where you're defining the construct very clearly. Then, based on the definition that you have developed, you generate a long list of potential questionnaire items. Sometimes you may generate 40 or 50 different questionnaire items that you're thinking about using for your ultimate scale, ultimately realizing you'll only be using a handful of them. Then, based on expert opinion, qualitative research with consumers, focus groups, and literature reviews, you may start to reduce these items down to a more manageable set. Once you've reduced this, this set of questions down to a more manageable set, you'll collect some preliminary data. That's step four, where it says purify measure. At this stage, a variety of statistical tools, those that are beyond the scope of today's class, can be utilized to help you identify which measurement items contain promise and which of those are unlikely to be useful for your final scale. Exploratory factor analysis, or EFA, is likely the most common procedure used during this stage. Once you've reduced your number of scale items even further, you'll collect another larger set of data to work towards the final set of questionnaire items for your scale. At this stage, you'll engage in steps six and seven, which is assess the reliability of your instrument and assess the validity of your instrument. And again, there's a variety of different statistical procedures that help you assess how reliable your tool is and how valid your tool is. Now it's likely at any one of these stages, you're going to run into some problems that indicates you've made missteps earlier in your process of developing your scale. That's what these red lines indicate here. Feedback loops, sending you back to earlier parts of the scale development process so that you can continue on with a hopefully a better understanding of how to develop a proper scale. If you get through this entire process, the very last step is what you conclude with, developing scoring rules and norms. 